This video is a report back on a collective theater project between the Los Angeles Poverty Department and the peer group, which is based in Donderen in the north of the Netherlands. Now, as you can see, the peer group is housed in a rural setting, and they raise pigs and they have a garden, but mainly they do theater and arts projects about the concerns of people living in rural communities in the Netherlands. Just like we, the Los Angeles Poverty Department, make projects about our Skid Row neighborhood. The new home of the peer group is a former munitions depot from the Cold War period and was used to house American goods in case the Cold War became a real war. And that's why we made a joint project on the Cold War. And with the support of the Cultural Exchange International Program, we were able to do extensive research on the Cold War period, which obviously is a huge subject. We did research in Los Angeles, we did research in the Netherlands, and together we went on a trip to Berlin. We decided to focus the performance project on the former East Germany. Given that we had done all this research, we wanted to take a road less traveled. So we decided to focus on artists, dissident artists living in East Germany during the Cold War. And we wanted to ask the question, what is it like to be an artist working for change, but on the losing side of history? In other words, these artists were committed to their society. They wanted to change it from within to create socialism with a human face, but ultimately they were not able to get there. This approach allowed us to make an imaginary leap from our own work as artists working in communities and working for social change. We finally began to crystallize <laughs> around Krista Wolf. What happened then and, you know, where we're at now um, were they simply misguided uh, intellectual idealists were they duped um, by the communists and by socialism um, or did they never fully get the opportunity to create the type of um, society uh, that they were hoping for. These folks having lived under the iron fist of the Soviet Union and the GDR and um, the strongmen that um, that system created and imposed upon the people with the Stasi and the, 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 the same excesses that um, we experience today in many ways in our so-called democratic states. It's kind of sad that um, the good, sensitive, thoughtful, intellectual people from both sides of the wall have never fully had an opportunity to um, they've had we've had opportunities to change ideas and concepts but to put them into place someplace and see what would happen like Mira, why don't you and Kevin do the thing that yesterday that we were doing with with, um, with Flores and Henriette where you're trying to get your one behind person is trying to get behind the other so, so Jones, it is just that we want to be behind each other's back? Yeah. Or that we are... Well, whoever is behind each other's back gets to... If you get behind the other back, then the other person has to, has to go like this, and then, you know, you're following, and then you get down to the other end. Nee, fijn. Uh... Oh. Ik heb nog een vlek.
glas Prosecco hier ingebracht. Kijk eens, een heleboel fiets! Ja, even een strijkje. Ja. Liever eerst rechts dan naar beneden, maar oké, okay, ik heb Kom maar, doe nog maar. Ja, dat dat iets beters dat is voor de afval. Ah, Peter, kan je mij even in de der? Yeah, then on page 222, yeah. mm -hmm. as of now, in a mild depression, says so Freud, one is quite capable of writing. So, so I have to call it mild. So I have to call it mild. Is here in the next two lines, you're out. Like, so the, the graveyard is here, like yeah. it is here. Be here. So. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, all, Danny. It's more real when it's on TV, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not seeing it for you. It's mostly real. It's not on TV. Building off first wall. Yeah? So it's gonna be like... Like the first wall we did yesterday. So it yeah. will be like... Yeah. With a little bit of a bow in it. Yeah. Yeah, with a sort of a curve. Not too much adaptation to the architecture. Yeah. So... Except that we can't go that far because of the vintage. Remember yes. that. And um, this one. The big ass one. In the middle. Do we want to sort of say who's going to do that? No. Nope. I'm, I'm playing a song, so I guess yeah. I'm not. You know, the preservation of peace, you know, calls for putting a stop like to all the activities of West German militarists and, and like for securing the rebirth of Germany, you know, as a, as a neutral state, you know, through the conclusion of a, um, uh, a German peace treaty, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, well, there's uh, the, you know, the Bonn government's, uh, you know, imperialistic policy uh, conducted under the guise, you know, of, of anti-communism. Well, that is the continuation of the, uh, well, you know, uh, aggressive goals of fascist imperialism. You know what I'm <laughs> saying, mate? <laughs> wat ik wilde door deze maatschappij en deze marxistisch socialistische visie op de dingen dat mensen zichzelf kunnen verwezenlijken. I write about the things that was happening now and I'm not above what I write about. I'm a part of it. So the people, the people who don't want to be a part of the filthiness of our time, they're the dirty ones. It wasn't until yesterday when we were doing that text, we were doing that scene, and um, we're building the wall in between us, and, and I'm still trying to connect, stay connected to Meryl. That that scene, the fullness of it, really struck me, and, and I better understood it. I completely understood it, you know, by combining the text with the movement. And I like the feedback we got last night. I like the young guy Sanders' comments. 
You know, he's a bright kid, but he didn't know anything about um, the Cold War. But like he said, you know, he might get lost in, in some of the complexities, but we kept bringing him back to something he could understand. And most importantly, you know, and he's a research guy as it turns out, <laughs> but it made him want to think more. And um, going through some of the things that Kristen Wolf confronted. You know, what I'm doing, um, what's the flip side of it? So there was a lot of stuff that, you know, um, from the people, this wasn't a cherry-picked audience. They just showed up. And even for the people who didn't have a history, like the young woman who had read about Kristen Wolf, she had a, a, a fuller understanding of her life. <laughs> so, one day that hated her, that German Democratic Prussian eagle, were to grab me with his sharp claw, pick me up, take me to the edge, I would fall apart. 